So despite the turmoil that we saw with the overall markets as well with Tesla stock before the market opened simply because of conflicts going on in the Middle East, we actually started to see Tesla stock as well as the overall market have a day picking back upwards, which means that this temporary relief that I talked about for October is still actually on. In fact, I wanna go ahead and share this tweet I saw from a fellow YouTuber, Shasha Yansen, which says that the market seems to be largely ignoring the situation in Israel and Gaza and starts to say that the S&P 500 down 0.6% uh, in pre-market trading, big tech down one through 2% and oil up just four dollars and then he goes on to say that in a year of massive overreaction to everything this seems odd the market goes down a lot more when jerome powell sneezes in d minor and which i would agree with sasha on this that it is pretty odd that we did see the markets pick back upwards but at the end of the day as market participants, the market's always right. We can't just say, oh, the market's wrong. We have to follow what the market is doing. And it seems that the market is still pushing upwards for October. Now, something else interesting that we're seeing is that the 10-year treasury is actually trickling down, which means that we could see some relief for the overall markets. But the reality is that we have an influx of new data that's coming inwards, and that data is going to be earnings. For example, if we take a look at this calendar over here, we see a ton of companies reporting earnings and of course we see that tesla is reporting earnings very soon so along with the 10-year treasury one of the things i've been telling members of the push and profit private group is that hey we're gonna want to shift our attention to what happens during this current earnings season and what we've seen is that a lot of analysts have actually revised earnings estimates to be upwards so that's going to be something that we're going to really want to keep our eyes on but in addition to that we do have a busy week of data for example this wednesday we have the producer price index which i always say is a leading indicator for inflation and then of course we have the fed minutes for september being released but most importantly for this week is going to be the cpi report that comes out october 12th and the reason why i say the cpi report is one of the most important pieces of data we want to keep our eyes on is because this is one of the last pieces of data that we actually get before we get an update from the Federal Reserve November 1st on their decision with monetary policy. See, last week, or the last couple of weeks, the focus was really on the labor markets, and we saw what happened with the labor markets and how that influenced Tesla stock as well as the overall markets. But now the main concern is, okay, well, what's actually happening with inflation now with that said i want us to go ahead and hop into my laptop so that we could go ahead and just take a deeper dive into a look into tesla stock really look at it from a technical perspective as well as just cover what are some things that we're seeing with the overall market so let's go ahead and hop into my laptop all righty so we are officially in my laptop taking a look at tesla stock and as we saw Tesla pretty much pushed upwards despite having some turbulence before the markets opened. And again, this isn't just Tesla stock in silo. In fact, if we take a look at the overall S&P 500, the same price action. We see a lot of uh, you know pain before the market actually opened, but we see the market pushed upwards for today. Now, granted, yes, the overall market did push up a lot more quicker than Tesla. In fact, if we just pan over to Tesla, we did see that Tesla did fall down further until the middle of the day yet we actually pushed upwards closing relatively at the same levels that we did before this whole panic in the middle east actually took place now something else i want us to pay attention to and this is in regards to monetary policy as that's been a huge driving factor for the markets is some of the words that we got from one of our central bankers fed jefferson in fact we see this tweet over here saying that fed jefferson said as a policy maker unmindful cumulative effects of past rate increases have not been felt now this pretty much goes aligned with what i've said a multitude of different times that it's very unlikely that the feds are going to hike in the next meeting and if they do it'd be very much un uh, unnecessary simply because it takes time for the markets to feel or to, rather the economy to really take into effect the updates and monetary policy and so we still haven't felt past rate hikes and so the fed is pretty much addressing that yeah they also agree that the economy still hasn't really felt the true pain that has been uh, or is going to be coming from previous rate hikes in addition to that we also have this other tweet highlighting what he said saying that uh, starting in 2024 more will be hit by uh sorry reading this wrong more 
will be hit by a rise in rates. I don't know if that was written weird, if I'm just reading things real yeah, weird at the moment, right? It's pretty late. But this is kind of signifying that, hey, we may not need a hike because the pain is most likely going to be coming later. And in fact, we actually see this reflected in the futures market because we see the futures markets are now pricing in an even lower percentage of a rate hike for November 1st, uh, the meeting with uh, the Federal Reserve and the decision on monetary policy. Now, you guys could watch my previous videos. I've said this for quite some time that we were most likely going to see this number go down. And I believe that as we continue going into this week, once we get the PPI numbers and the CPI numbers, producer price index and consumer price index numbers, we're most likely going to see these uh, go down as I don't expect headline and core inflation to really go up much. In fact, I actually expect it to contract a bit further. And that's going to soften the idea that, hey, the feds need to hike. And so that's something that we're going to absolutely want to pay attention to, as I said previously in this video being the CPI report and of course the PPI report being a leading indicator but it's interesting because we're starting to see future markets kind of say hey the feds are probably not going to hike now going back into Tesla stock let's go ahead and actually look at something right so actually let's go ahead and pan over to the S&P 500 index and one of the things that we're seeing is for October we're actually seeing the markets bounce off this critical level over here, the 4,200 level, and it's actually pushing upwards. And this is something I want us to be mindful of, that October, historically, the price action is that we see this kind of bottoming out and we see a little bit of a rally. But I said that this doesn't necessarily mean that things are over. I, I still think that there's more pain in the economy and any rally that we get is really just a temporary relief. I think if you're trading Tesla in the short term, you could definitely take advantage of the rallies going upwards. But don't expect this to be an area where we're going to start bouncing into all time highs. As I said in several videos, the economic landscape is just not one of the best landscapes that you want to be in for an upward market. In fact, uh, let's go ahead and actually just pan over to Tesla stock. Let's take a look at something. So, yes, Tesla stock has been pushing up for October. Uh, as we see that the market has some seasonality uh, in, uh, you know, embedded into it. We talked about how August is a slow month for the markets. Lots of fund managers take off. September historically being a bad month. If you look at the last few Septembers for just the last few years, you're gonna see this pattern. Now, again previous price action is not indicative of future performance that's something i want us to really uh, remember that just because we typically see october have a little bit of a bounce doesn't mean that it's always going to happen but for the moment being this is exactly what we're seeing despite having some turmoil right despite the geopolitical tensions and so um yeah we're, we're seeing tesla push up and what's interesting is Tesla's at this area where there's a lot of volume relative to price. And so if Tesla just continues pushing upwards, well, we enter into this, to this area where there's low volume relative to price. And when there's low volume relative to price and there's buying pressure, well, we could see Tesla push upwards again. But as I've been saying for a while now, I say this all the time. Every time Tesla gets close to this level over here, this descending trend line, it starts to reject. We see it several different times over here, over here. If we just keep going back around over here, it didn't get as close to it, but it did kind of reject as we got closer to it uh, over here, over here and over here. So we've seen that this has been a very strong downtrend for Tesla. And I actually don't expect Tesla to break out of this descending trend line. So my uh, actions or what I'm going to be doing for Tesla, as I've been doing for the past, is I'm going to be monitoring closely how Tesla reacts as we get closer to this descending trend line. Because as I've been doing is every time Tesla gets close to here, I start shorting Tesla. But again, I have to wait for confirmation. I think too many people jumped the gun. I've seen comments of people saying, uh, hey, I, I jumped the gun. I thought this was going to happen. No, technical analysis is not put in place for you to predict the markets. This line over here does not mean that, oh, Tesla is going to go up here and get rejected. No, it just, it just simply means that you want to watch Tesla as we get closer 
And if we see Tesla get rejected, if we see that confirmation, then you could take action. Too many people are just too quick to go ahead and jump into a trade without waiting for confirmation. And so that's something we want to be aware of. It's not that, yeah, automatically Tesla is going to go up and get rejected. Because what if Tesla has some catalyst events that could actually break it out of this? Now, again, one of the looming catalyst events is the Cybertruck deliveries. I think we're getting closer and closer each day, as I've been pointing out in my videos of updates with the Cybertruck. But even then, I still don't think that we are going to break out of this trend, but I could be wrong. Maybe we may break out of it, and if it is a, a breaking out of this trend, then I'll keep you guys updated. But for the time being, I don't see this as a period um, where we're going to see Tesla break into uh, you know all-time highs. We still have a long way to go. And uh, I, I still think that there's much more pain, especially as we go into the beginning half of 2024. I think that's where we actually see the most pain. And then towards the end of 2024, that's going to be an exciting time for not only just Tesla traders, but also Tesla investors. As I often try to uh, you know, emphasize on this channel, I am long-term bullish on Tesla. I have exposure to my long-term portfolio on Tesla. I've been investing since 2017. I believe even in my community posts, I shared uh, me buying, I don't know if it was like 45 shares back in 2017 i think <laughs> i think at that time it was worth like 14,000 it's ridiculous how uh how let's just look at this <laughs> how much tesla has done uh, since the last few years but um what i'm trying to say is yes i'm long term bullish on tesla but i i still see that there is pain going on but one of the things I am also optimistic for Tesla is just we're seeing a lot more trouble for these legacy automakers. In fact, look at this tweet over here from Sawyer Merritt saying General Motors on Monday said that it is laying off 200 additional workers due to the UAW strike, adding a sixth impacted plant. Now, of course, no one wants to see fellow Americans lose their job. I'm not over here clapping my hands, oh, Tesla's going up and we're seeing all these other Americans lose their job. No, that, that's just evil, right? I, I don't want people to lose their jobs, but what I'm trying to point out to is that we're seeing more stress on the legacy automakers, and I believe this is gonna put them further behind in the race to catch up to Tesla in regards to EVs and so I think this is better positioning Tesla, but I, I want to make it clear that I do, I, I do not want more Americans to lose their jobs. I think it's terrible, and I think things are going to get worse a little bit further on. Uh, I, I believe the feds know that the labor markets are most likely going to soften as we get closer to 2024, and so that's a bit scary. I think right now is not the time to switch over to a new career. I think if you're at your job, make sure you stay there, keep your tenure up and, and try to be as, as good as you can, be a great employee because right now things may start to get a little bit scary, okay? Um, but again, you know, we're gonna wanna pay, wanna, uh, sorry, we're gonna wanna pay attention to the data. Of course, the data could show something else completely happening. I doubt it, but of course we're gonna wanna follow along, which is why I showed you guys the economic calendar and what are some things that we want to be mindful of. With that said, uh, as, as I've been saying, October looks like it's actually Uptober, right? That's the that's the new name that we should call it for right now. And I think as traders, there's definitely a great opportunity to take over this trend. Uh, some traders I know are, are pretty much just trading, uh, let's go ahead and pull it up, uh, not at and I meant to type in TQQQ, which is a triple leverage uh, index ETF for the QQQs. And we see that while the overall markets did push up, TQQQ from uh, the bottom of today really, or not, that's not really the exact problem, but did 5% upward. So there's lots of opportunities if you are a trader, especially if you're trading the QQQs like the TQQQ or the SQQQ, which I have a separate video breaking that down. But with that said, let me know in the comment section below, what are your thoughts on Tesla stock uh, for the end of this month, as well as what are your expectations or ideas or predictions for the third quarter earnings that are going to come out. I'm definitely going to want to be uh, be on that call to really listen to what uh, we hear for forward guidance. That's going to be a huge driving factor for Tesla. As I always say, there's a lot of nuance to these earnings calls, and I'm excited to hear what Tesla is going to say on this next earnings call. But let me know what your predictions are. And before you guys go, make sure to watch this next video right over here, where I break down how to identify opportunities any day within the market by simply trading a niche like the QQQ. 
So definitely take out uh, take take a look into that video, and I'll see you guys on that video. Take care, guys.